This video is continuing right where the previous video left off. We're in part 025, Matrices and Plotting, and we're scrolling down to the plotting section. Now, I introduced a little bit of plotting in the previous videos where I was reading data from file and then graphing it. So let's look at a few more things that we can do with plotting. The following example comes from the book MATLAB for Engineers, 5th edition by Holly Moore. Let's run this section, Control Enter. And this section is going to pop up four different figures. I'll try and arrange them so we can see them on the screen right here. And I'm just graphing some basic mathematical functions, exponential, sine, quadratic, and square root. So I generate a vector named x's. It's going to be values from 0 to 10 with a step size or increment of 0 0.2. And then I'm going to use exp to raise e to the power of each of those x values to get my y values. Now then I'm going to say figure right here to just prepare a figure for use. So basically, if you can imagine one of these blank, that's basically what I've created with just using the word figure. I don't actually have to do it the very first time, but it's going to be really vital to do that between each of my plots if I want them all to show up on separate figures. So I put it here just to start getting in the habit. I use the plot command with first my vector of x values, comma my vector of y values to plot that, and then I give my graph a title, x label, Y label, and I turn grid on. So just the word grid, blank space, on, and it turns these little grid lines on. So for example, without that, what I would see instead is that one of these figures doesn't have the grid lines right there. And I think the grid lines are nice to more easily read the values and see where different points on the curve are at. All right, so let's undo, put grid on back on. And then below this, I basically just have figure and then a plot after I created a different set of y values. I give those labels and a title, I turn the grid on, and I do it with another calculation of y values, and then another down here. But I want to show you what happens if I don't use figure. So if I just delete figure from this section and run it, I only get one graph. Like the others are not hiding somewhere else, I just get the one here. Because what happens is when you use plot repeatedly, further plots just replace the older plots that you have, which is often not what you want. So if you want them to appear in different windows, you simply put figure right before any future plots that you want to graph. Continuing on down, let's run this section here, control enter. Now I generated two figures. They both look a little bit like nonsense. The first one looks like nonsense because it's got some random generated values, and the second one just looks like it was drawn by a toddler in crayons, but it's actually showing how you would put multiple curves on the same plot. So first off, I generate a vector, which I've named times. Suppose we want a 24-hour day in half-hour increments, so I might create a vector from 0 to 24 with a step size or increment of 0 0.5. And then I'm going to use randn, my function for generating normally distributed random values, and I'm going to make it one row and length of times number of columns. This sort of convention right here, this sort of format is really valuable when you want some vector to have the same dimensions as some other vector you've already got. Well, this is a one row, some number of columns vector. How do I get this to have the same number of columns? Well, instead of trying to figure it out and then just plugging a number in right here, I just use the length function which is really handy because suppose this changes at a later point in time, maybe I only want 12 hours, well then the temperatures is going to be calculated based on that new length. So my code will be adaptable. I won't have to make any further changes and this will all still work. Now I would like to have temperature values that are at least in the ballpark of something that's conceivable for temperatures. So I'm gonna multiply the temperatures by four and add 90. Uh, they're gonna be a bit hot for temperatures, but um, the average will be 90 and the standard deviation will be 4. And then I'm going to plot it right here, put some labels on, use that figure command I just talked about for a totally separate figure, and then calculate some vectors and plot those on that other graph. And I'm going to use this new command, hold on, so that I can plot multiple curves on that same figure. So as soon as I run hold on, any further plot commands that I do are going to be layered on the most recent figure. Here I plot, and hold on is still active because I haven't turned it off, and then I do a third plot. And so that's where we get, in this figure right here, the three plots. There's like a red, an orange, and a blue. They're a little bit hard to see. You can turn hold off with this command right here, but usually I don't use this because also just closing the figure automatically turns it off. So it's not like the hold on would continue into further sections if I closed the figure. 
but it can also just be a good feature to turn hold off so that you don't get confused. And I don't accidentally run something in a further section that gets layered on the same plot, and maybe that was not what I intended. Now an alternative for putting multiple lines or curves on a single plot is to simply, in the parentheses of the plot command, have first your x vector and then your y vector, and then a second x vector, could be the same, could be different, and then a second y vector. So when I run this code, control enter, I get two curves on the same plot, just by separating them inside the parentheses here. And I added in an extra space for emphasis, and maybe I should even add more, but I actually don't like doing it this way. I think this leads to more mistakes than simply doing multiple different plot commands with a hold on, so I don't recommend it, but I was just showing you that it is possible. And that's actually all for this video. I will be doing more with plotting in a later video, but I wanted just that basic introduction of how can you do multiple plots, how can you do multiple curves on the same plot, and just reminding folks about the basics of axis labeling and titling.